Hello, everyone. My name is Jian Li. I'm a professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. I did my、uh, PhD、uh, program of the psychosocial occupational health. That's、uh, it has been twenty years. That's、uh, I'm so lucky to have the op- opportunity to work with Professor Johannes Sigris. Hello, I'm Johannes Sigris. I'm trained as a sociologist, and I was. A professor of medical sociology at the medical faculty of the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf in Germany, and after my retirement, I was awarded a senior professorship. Now, right now, I'm an emeritus professor. During my career, my academic career, and we started studies in the 1980s and 1990s, where I, together with my team, developed. The model of effort-reward imbalance at work as a, a work stress model, which has now been widely investigated internationally.、Um, my expertise, in addition to doing research, is also the transmission of scientific evidence into policy. I've been working with the World Health Organization and the International Labour Organization to promote healthy work. In 2021, I started with the idea of developing a book. I submitted the grant proposal to the German Research Foundation, and when it was accepted, I started to write the book. And in, I invited Jan Li to be a co-author. During the past three decades, that's、uh, a lot of scientists, our colleagues, have、uh, produced a、uh, lot of. Research evidence on this research area. So that's,、uh, but however, we do not have any systematic presentations on the uh, topic, uh, particularly for the state of the art of the research developments. So that that is the major、uh, motivation for us to develop this important book. We submitted the book,、uh, the manuscript、uh, by. Summer、uh, 2023, and it has now been published in January this year. We try to、uh, integrate all the、uh, aspects, particularly、uh, from the uh, different uh, inter- uh, uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, area, so that this book would be useful for the academic trainings for the different.、Uh, Occupational health、uh, professionals, including the students, researchers, decision makers in in the occupational policies and the business as well. Occupational medicine still defines the leading paradigm if we talk about work and health. And right now, the psychosocial factors are increasingly important, and that's that's why it is very important to have a textbook showing. The relevance、uh, and the evidence of psychosocial factors、uh, for occupational health. I think there are several things、uh, important with our messages. First, we would like readers to understand the concept. Of psychosocial work environment and its significance for health, we would like them to appreciate the role of theoretical models and their measurement. We would like that they appreciate the evidence, the scientific evidence, which shows that psychosocial adverse working conditions have a direct effect on、uh, disorders such as depression, cardiovascular diseases. Metabolic disorders and other health issues, but there's also another way from health to work. Work and health is a dynamics 
process that work do have some effect on the health, but the health may also affect the work process. That, for example, that when the workers would have some, uh, when the workers have the disease, that's what will happen next. Whether they will leave the job markets or they will return back to the work. Uh, that's uh, after the return back to work, what will happen? That our book shows how important the effects of reduced health on the ability to work and return to work is. And finally, we make a strong point for the role of prevention. To know, to know that it's important to know the role of good practice of occupational health promotion. And finally, also to be aware of the global damage of uh, the challenges of healthy work in the less developed countries. Solid knowledge is now available on health adverse psychosocial working conditions. This knowledge should be applied to improve well-being and productivity at work. At the global uh, level, that's we already know that due to the difference welfare regime and the labor market policies all over the world, the psychosocial working conditions are unevenly distributed across the continents and the countries. For example, in the United States, that's uh, the workers are um, suffered more or by the psychosocial uh, stressful uh, working conditions compared to other countries. The union membership in decline, as well as that uh, we do not have the paid uh, uh, vacation uh, among the workers. I think there are two dimensions of uh, interventions. The first one concerns national labor and social policies. And actually in Europe, and in particular in Scandinavian countries, uh, there are quite promising developments of uh, workplace security, of uh, uh, promotion of uh, healthy work. The second level of intervention is the company, is the organization. And what is important there and what is being done with success is risk assessment and surveillance. I mean, the critical working conditions have to be monitored and then action plans have to be developed and implemented. There are in fact uh, quite a lot of successful interventions showing that by improving the psychosocial work environment that work productivity is improved and that health and well-being of workers is improved as well. You could go back to the theoretical models like reducing the demands, increasing the control, uh, increasing the reward opportunities, increasing uh, relaxation and uh, reducing time pressure, work pressure, uh, improving the balance between work and private life. So there are many, many ways of improving organizational life. And uh, this is uh, where research has to be um, transferred into practice. That employers are aware of the suffering of so many employed people and that they are motivated to really improve the working conditions and to guide their activities by uh, sound knowledge. And that's the responsibility of science to provide this sound knowledge. Of course, the workers should take, uh, take care of themselves, but at the high level, the employer, they also should do something to protect the workers' health and safety. That's uh, employer. Definitely, that they should have the, uh, more social responsibility to uh, protect the workers' health. And uh, another important aspect uh, for the employer that they should know that the 
uh, economic loss due to the uh, psychosocial working conditions, stressful work, uh, working environments. Uh, nowadays, there are some research evidence to indicate uh, investing in in the worker safety and health is a good business if we calculate the return on investments. That we can see that uh, the small amounts of money uh, to be invested to the workers' health would uh, produce something bigger later on. That's not only the workers' health, but the, but also the productivity and the profits. For the long history of the occupational health as well as the occupational medicine, that's uh, uh, in early uh, age of these disciplines, that's uh, we focused on the physical and the chemical hazard in the workplace. But uh, in recent years, particularly in the high income countries, that the psychosocial factors uh, uh, bec uh, become more and more important. Even in the middle and the uh, low income countries, that we also observe the psychosocial hazards in the workplace. So the, uh, due to the development of our society and the, all the new uh, techniques, as well as the new formats and the arrangements in the workplace, that we need to highlight the importance of the psychosocial factors in the workplace. I would like to emphasize that the topic of psychosocial occupational health has really a global significance. And this is reflected to some extent in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And you may know that the goal number eight is really to uh, enhance uh, healthy work and productive work and to extend the developments in the high income countries into middle and low income countries where informal employment is still the rule instead of providing a safe and formalized uh, employment conditions. So there's a long way to go and we should not forget that producing or uh, strengthening healthy work is a, a global, uh, a politically important task. Actually, the global burden of work-related diseases is uh, such a huge challenge that we need to bring together the evidence and to try to implement knowledge also into practice.